Hey, Dustin Vanoy here. This is part of Apache Spark Data Kickstart. Uh, I did an introduction that you can go back and watch. This is how to quickly get going with Databricks Community Edition so you can start to write Apache Spark code. So I'll show you how to set up Databricks Community Edition environment. And this is a great option to have for testing out Databricks and learning Spark. Uh, it's going to, going to last longer. It's not going to expire after 14 days like if you're in one of the cloud environments and do a trial there. So this is limited functionality and scalability. So you can't run your full proof of concept for your company here, but it's a great way to just get some Spark code going without having to install things locally. Now, if you want to set up a more permanent Databricks environment in Azure, I have a video for that. Check the link in the description. Uh, I might have links for AWS and Google, depending on how well those turn out when I try them. So let's take a look at the description for what else I have for you there. Uh, once you're set up, we'll do a very simple test notebook just to make sure everything's working and give you a place to get started. So please check out some of my other videos uh, as part of this Apache Spark Data Kickstart series to keep teaching you about doing Apache Spark programming from kind of the very beginning. Um, but there's also quick start notebooks to get going right away uh, and many other options to keep learning. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's go set up Community Edition. You can go to community.databricks.com to get started. I usually go to databricks.com slash try Databricks, which is where you can pick from all of the options and then there's a link to get you to Community Edition. First, we fill in your information, of course, and click the button. And then you'll see the options. If you look down below, you'll see the link that we need for Community Edition. All right, once we've clicked the button, it's going to take us to a page that lets you know it's sending an email your way. You can go to that email uh, and uh, click on the link and that'll take you to a place where you can set your password and get started. Here's a quick glimpse at the email I received and the link that I choose. Uh, once you choose that, you'll see something that looks um, the same or at least similar to this where you can set up your password. Once you've set up your password, of course, choose the button and it'll take us to the next step. So now I'm here at the sign in page. I've set my password. I can go and enter my uh, email and my password information and get going. Here I am in the workspace after signing in and notice that on the left side, I have some different options. First thing I'll do is start a cluster. I'll go ahead to compute, choose new cluster, enter some information here. Now our options are definitely limited here in Community Edition, which is, which is fine. If we're just trying to get started with Spark, it's not a big deal. I can choose from a few different runtimes. I'd say probably try the latest unless you have some specific needs. And, um, and then I've got a bit of kind of a, a warning or a heads up as to the limited resources I'll have. I can choose Spark and set a few configs. Um, not necessary for the type of training we'll do right now, but maybe we'll come back to that in the future. I can click the blue button to create cluster and here we go. It'll take just a few minutes to spin that up and then I can get started with a test notebook. Notice in the left pane, we have a couple personas we can choose from. We can either work with the data engineering setup or the machine learning setup. If you're running a real environment, not community edition that is, and have premium workspace, you'll also see a SQL uh, environment that you can jump into here. Uh, so this might change in the future, but at this point you kind of have these different sort of panes you can jump into depending on the type of work you plan to do. So we can stay with data science and engineering and we can jump into uh, workspace to create a new notebook. Okay, I'm here in the notebook I created. I kept it as Python for the language. I'm attached to that one cluster I have automatically. If you look at the top right, you'll see you can always switch clusters. Uh, now I'll start typing out some Spark code. This is really just a test. I'm not gonna talk too much through the code here, but basically I'll set a variable, which I'm going to name data frame variable. I'm going to call spark.createDataFrame and just type in some value. So I give it uh, a list object and within that list, I'll put uh, additional lists. So each list within the list is a row within the data frame. If you didn't follow that, don't worry. We're gonna get to real examples in the next videos I do. So once I've got that, I can jump down to another notebook cell. And from there, I can go ahead and write this data just to test out the right functionality, make sure that uh, things seem to be working on my community edition cluster. As it's running, I can always click to, to see some details, but it should run pretty quick with such a small data set. There we go, it's completed. Uh, my cluster seems to be working. I can write to some spilt in storage space and I've created that table that's now available for me to use from the data explorer on the left. Going back to compute, you can see I've got this cluster running. I can always stop it. Uh, if you're 
it's going to auto terminate at some point, but if you're using your own resources, why not stop the thing and just avoid running it if you know you're done for the day. So that's it for Community Edition. Hopefully that was as easy for you as it was for me recording the video. Um, really that test notebook was just to make sure things are running. Stick with me, jump into the next video in this series about uh, how do we start writing our first PySpark code. Uh, and I hope that you'll enjoy the journey and learn a lot with me as we go from not really knowing Apache Spark at all to being able to be productive in the real world by reading and writing data. Um, please subscribe to the channel, click on notifications if you want to be alerted as I add more videos to this series to really get you trained up on Apache Spark. See you next time.